Hello and welcome to lesson number 3.1 dealing with vector data. Vector data, or let me say it like this, there are two main formats of spatial information. One is called vectorial data that is stored with a geography in terms of a vector or a set of vectors describing a line, a polygon, different points whatsoever uh, so this is a very distinctive position for that vector and then there are raster data sets rasters you can imagine them like photos photos of the earth different wavelength with different levels of information and so on so you have vectorial data on the one hand and raster data sets on the other hand we have dealt in, our, in the previous lessons with vectorial data already as we have downloaded data from OpenStreetMap, we have imported shapefiles, we have stored information as shapefiles. And so let's dive a little bit into the vectorial data as a concept. First of all, we will start with the last lesson. So there are a bunch of layers added to my project here. I have rivers with 19 features. And let's dive into right there. What is a feature? We will open up the attribute table here and you can see that there are 19 entries. So there are 19 different geometries. Geometries in terms of polylines uh, and each geometry has different fields or attributes. Um, there's a field for the full ID which is of, ty of uh, type string with a maximum length of 254 characters. Then we have the OSM ID, same format. We have the OSM type, same format. We have a name, name F, name M, waterway, and so on and so on. So, but you have seen, well, all of them are strings. Don't be scared. There are different op options. Of course, you have the strings, which is quite common to store information, but have a look at the OSM ID. This could be an integer as well. So not a floating number or not a double decimal number, but an integer. And so there are different types of fields in terms of what sort of information is stored into it. And um, we have an attribute value like the OSM ID of this feature here is 59417013. Um, this is shown, of course, also, or this can be queried also using the ID, uh, the information tool. Here it is, or it's called identify features. So let's have a look here and uh, go to the selection. There's this yellow line, this is the selected river. And so you can see it is the OSM ID 59417013. And the identify feature will only work on the current selected layer. So if I go here, protected areas, and click on a pole or on the building, nothing happens. If I click on the protected areas, then I will get the information of that area. That's that. So first of all, objects like geometries are called features. And then you have attributes or fields of information that are the columns in the attribute table. Once again, open attribute table, lines are features, columns are fields and attributes. As, as we have mentioned before, there we have dealt with shapefiles. Shapefile is a, a vectorial data format invented, I think, by ESRI itself. ESRI, a big global a uh, player in the fields of uh, geographical information systems. They somehow invented the, the, the GIS called ArcGIS. And, um, but once again, there are different formats and you can store those vectorial information in different types of formats. Shapefile has a um, disadvantage as it is only able to hold a limited number of information. So I think the maximum file size of a shapefile is two gigabytes. Um, you have a limited number, or so we have seen the field names and the length of the field name is limited. 
and once more with one shape file you can either store points lines or polygons then there is something called the geo package which which is a data a file based data uh, a file based database and this is capable of storing a lot of different uh, geometries so you can store in one geo package a line a point feature set as well as polygonal feature set and now we will add some more information using a geo package connection so we, we can see it here in the browser there's geo package and we will create a new connection this is one thing or one way to deal with geo packages so not adding everything from the geo package to to the uh, to the project but connect with this field or uh, file based database and then just selecting the um the training data so once we're here training data dot geo package we'll open this once we are there we can en uh, enhance it here and add let's say the schools and we will add this layer to the project go there oh well there are the schools i will deselect all the other similar um, polygons here and let's see whether we can find the school here these are the schools so this is Svelindam primary school also primary school and here we have the high school so these are now I think four features let's have a look go to show feature count yep we have four features another way is of course to open up the attribute table just to look at the number of rows in there it's four geo package geo package is rising in the in the in the fields of gis so um, it is this pre pre filled format in qgis if you would like to store information on your hard drive to take it with you and um, so it's a rising format but nevertheless it is not it is not um, so well known yet but i think it will be um, and if you would like to be very sure that every different gis system can understand what you're talking about in terms of data store it as a shapefile and you're on a safe side of life but um, as i said it has some limitations and sometimes you need to switch the format as that geo package is one of them another package is or another way to store information vectorial information is a spatial light database once again we will add a new connection go to Q's training exercise data where is the spatial light let's have a look there it is sqlight put this up there's a land use information let's add this to to the project itself and there we are this is now or this is now the land a land use layer let's have a look what type of information is there or farmland we have nature conservative which is also part of the protected areas if you have seen it here right and that's it so then now we have a lot of layers in our project and as you can see we have a sorting problem our polygonal layer like the pol buildings and water polygons are covering information from the underlying layers so just imagine that you have a base layer and you put some other sheet of paper that is partially transparent on that which is protected areas once we have that we put another layer on it let's switch off all the other layers here once we have that we will add the rivers layer there we are and now we will add the schools layer now we have all the schools and so on and so on these are all sheets of information covering each other and this is now quite interesting so if, I, if i'm adjusting land uh, the land use layer here most part of swellendam will be covered let's have a look there it is no more information there right and also the school layer is hidden and that's not good i can switch also the symbology here we will come to symbology later on but let's switch to symbology put it on again no change at all so what is 
mostly the case, you need to reorder your layers. First, most easiest way is click and drop. So choose all the polygonal layer to the bottom. Let's do it like this. And schools. And now we have the buildings, schools on top of each other, and then use the polyline layers. And on top of everything else is the point information in terms of places here in this case. So now we have quite a good understanding on how this should look like. We are not covering information and everything is uh, at its place. Once again, to wrap it up, there are different ways of storing vectorial information, geo packages, shapefiles, spatial light databases. A plain and simple CSV file can hold spatial information. And there's GeoJSON in terms of how data is stored normally on the web. So GeoJSON is a pretty standard for, for communicating spatial content in the web. A lot of frameworks in the web um, are working quite well with GeoJSON. And um, once you have that information, always make sure to have everything properly aligned in your layer view so you're not losing information in presenting and um, everything is visible at hand. Another possibility to add some more structure in your data is to create some groups. So there's here the group button. We will add a group, let's say water. And just for Just for the purpose of showing, we will add the different layers to the water group. And now we have water and there's rivers and water polygons. The big advantage of those layer groups is you can easily switch off the whole set of layers. You don't need to click every layer here. You just can rearrange the visibility of the whole set of layers. And that's it for the moment. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for lesson number 3.2, Layer Symbology.